Good evening, this is your brother MakeEmSeeTheTruth.org Brother Herman here We're about to do another segment uh, Stemming out of Make Him See The Truth That's entitled Herman's Sermons Inside of, inside of Herman's Sermons You can find several different segments to, and series The first series was entitled God's Soil for Our Human Growth Inside of the soil, you can find many ingredients that will make up the soil. For our human growth, you can find many different character attributes that can make up our character as to how we're supposed to live while we're here on earth according to God, not Brother Herman. These attributes can be found in Galatians, the book of Galatians inside of our Holy Bible, chapter 5, verses 22 to 25. It's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And the fruit of the Holy Spirit is nothing more than the character of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We started off episode one of series one with ministry of the reconciliation and that is the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. We went down to episode two with humility, three was love, four was faith, five was knowledge, six was self-discipline, seven was meekness. 8 was self-control, 9 was temperance, 10 was long-suffering, 11 was gentleness, 12 was patience, and the last episode in series 1, episode 13, was tolerance. We started off series 2, which we entitled, God's Lessons, Our Receptions. We have to be able to receive everything that life brings uh, across our path. We have to be able to have the right attitude about each trial, challenge, obstacle, and tribulation that we are called to face. Once we get on the other side of these things, it becomes a lesson learned. So we must be able to go through these things, and the only way we can do that, we believe, is with our highest power, the most high power, which is the Holy Trinity. We started off episode one in series two with Victim Now Survivor. Episode 2 was servant, to be a servant first in order to be a leader or become a leader. Episode 3 was on purpose and position because we all have been given one and we are all servants. Episode 4 is are you doing the work once you figure these things out? And we have not because we ask not, so we must ask for everything, including our information as to whom we are, where we come from, and whom we can cry out to, and then our purpose and position. Episode 5 was on fulfilling nourishment, because we're always chasing the wrong kinds of nourishment. Today's topic matter is going to be on episode 6, and it is entitled, Once In, Always In. We're going to start this off with God's Lessons, Our reception. Series 2, Episode 6. If you want to help assist further this cause, then you can go to our cash app at dollar sign capital M A I K U M capital C D E capital T R U T H. And we'll appreciate whatever the Holy Trinity moves you to assist us with. Now then, we begin. Once in, always in. And it starts like this. Family. This kind of bond, if it has a strong and solid foundation, is meant to be a union of security, loyalty, and dependability. After all, when tough times come and go, who was there doing or in or afterwards? Usually your family or close friends. It was usually our parents and or close family members and friends. And if we are truly blessed, then this might have been a friend. For the word of God says that there will be a friend that's closer to us than even a brother. Many, if not all of us, are seeking this kind of a relationship. Only most of us continuously wound up in relationships that are unfulfilling also conditional 
and rocky at best. So because of the many letdowns we have experienced during our fruitless attempts and vain searches, our willingness to trust anyone just on their word alone becomes extremely difficult, if not impossible, challenging and seemingly impossible for us to, to do wholeheartedly, especially in the beginnings of each relationship. Unfortunately, if we have experienced the god-awful traumas of abandonment, molestation, and or physical or mental abuses, then the time it takes coupled with the number of consistent acts of transparent sincerities of others will be greatly, multi will be greatly multiplied for walls, the walls we have put up to begin to come down. And it will oftentimes take an act of God to spark our desires to start that process of trusting anyone again. Along with transparency, sincere acts of consistent kindness, loyalty, dependability, and accountability shown will come some biblical truths to lend even more weight of evidence that there are such kinds of genuine relationships that still exist out there. Inside of our basic instructions before leaving earth, our Holy Bible, the book of Luke, chapter 15, 29, verses 29 through 32, states this. It says, And he responded to his father, These many years I have served you and never transgressed against your commandment at any time, yet you Father never gave me a goat that I might make merry with my friends. And Father said to his son, You are always with me, never left. All that I have is yours. It's meant for us to make merry and be glad. Because of your brother, your brother was dead, gone spiritually and mentally, as well as physically uh, lost out there in the wilderness. And he has regained his senses, come to his senses. He is alive again. He was lost, but now is found. And from the scriptural text above, we can come to capture that younger family member asking for what was his by inheritance received and squandered. It became lost he became lost mentally because of his decisions, even spiritually dead. However, as we see the truth, this truth in verse 32, once in, always in, because the father was waiting for him to come back to his senses. We can also come to understand just how important it is to our creator for, for none of us to go astray and be left out of the family and the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 10 through 14. The parable of how Jesus will come find us, even if we are the only one that strays. Leave the 99, go after the one. God is the same way. Jesus is the same way. The Holy Spirit is the same way. The Holy Trinity is waiting for each of us lost souls to come to our senses or become sick and tired of being out there in the wilderness being out there left alone or feeling alone with no goodness coming into our lives they are waiting with their arms wide open for us to return to our rightful places inside of our Godhead's kingdom now then no matter which road you take to get to our Lord Jesus aka Yeshua once you get back to him and ask with a sincere heart for him to take over your fruitless efforts in searching for Father God's kingdom, then Jesus will answer you like he did me with the gift of Holy Spirit being sent by the Father, our Father God, to engraft you into our holy family. And then outside of blaspheming the Holy Ghost, which I pray you never do, 
for it's the only unpardonable sin which God won't forgive, and that states that in the Bible as well. Outside of that offense, there's absolutely nothing you can do to be ousted from the family because once you're in, you're always in. In the book of Exodus, I believe, or that book that follows, I believe it's uh, Joshua, you can find that Moses was given so many different chances to fulfill his purpose for coming. And God kept asking him to go and speak to Pharaoh, and he kept giving excuses. Well, before he got a chance to actually taste and see or walk inside of the promised land that God had promised him and the, and the people of Israel at that time to walk into, God had become tired of his excuses. So he snatched him up early. And as the Bible states, he went on to be with his ancestors. So he was never ousted from the family. Joshua took his place and led the people into the promised land. So if we don't do our purpose, then God will oust us or snatch us up early, but we will still be inside of the Holy Trinity's family. Once we profess that Christ is our Lord and Savior, that Jesus is the Son of God, and we believe wholeheartedly that God sent him for us, then we are engrafted into the family and once we are engrafted, we can never be ousted. Jesus says, no one can pluck you from my hand. Jesus says, the Father is greater than I, and no man can take you out of his hand. Nothing, no one, not even Satan. The only ones that can possibly remove ourselves is ourselves. And that is denouncing the Holy Trinity and pledging your allegiance to Satan, which I pray you never do. Again, once in, always in. This has been another one of Brother Herman's sermons, a teaching tool to help all of us who are thirsty in need of the correct information and the right knowledge, which is the only knowledge I know that to be right is God, the Godhead Most High Trinities. His knowledge is the right knowledge. Once we gain that knowledge and apply that knowledge, we can walk in that knowledge. We can be go from we can go from being lost to being found. We can go from being ignorant to being able to teach. Each one teach one. Iron sharpens iron. But you must become sick and tired of being lost and you must gain a desire to be found. This has been your brother Herman. Inside of Herman's Sermons, God's Lessons, Our Receptions. Again, if you want to assist us in this ministry, you can go to our cash app at dollar sign, capital M-A-I-K-U-M, capital C-D-E, capital T-R-U-T-H, and we appreciate whatever the Holy Trinity moves you to assist us with. In the meantime, stay tuned to episode number seven inside of... Series 2, God's Lessons and Our Receptions, and the title, Episode 7, which will be coming soon, is Are You a Part of the Solutions or Are Part of the Problems? We do not want to be found still part of the problem. So stay tuned. Until then, have yourself a great rest of your day, and may God continue to bless us all.